Richard Gladwell here for Star World, here with Nick Holroyd, Technical Director for Emirates Team New Zealand. And this is the, the christening ceremony, not, not the launch of the team's second AC-72. Nick, what are the obvious differences we can see here? Well, obviously the livery of the boats uh, is identical, so you actually you have to look reasonably close to, uh, to find the bigger differences. The, the platform structure, we've, we've stayed with the same uh, layout of the boat. Um, to be honest, most of the differences are, are, are further under the skin in, in, in terms of the systems and the way we sail the boat. Um, foils are new, so I'm sure those will attract some attention, but um, looking across the boat, she's, you know, she's very much in the same mould as the first boat. What's the, the foils to me look to be smaller, is that correct? Uh, yeah, certainly um, they are slightly, slightly smaller than the, uh, the originals. Um, and uh, yeah, the the, uh, the structural limits that we uh, fight against, and, and I guess a little bit of the confidence we got from a lot of the load data that we got out of the first boat, uh, have let, let us push in that direction. So, what's the objective with the smaller foils? Is that to basically uh, reduce the drag upwind and still keep foiling downwind? Yeah, I mean, any time you can re reduce wetted surface area and still do the job uh, is a reduction in, in parasite drag, and so you, you, you're very much the, the way you want to go. Um, and but you know, the same the same sort of stability criteria we have for foiling, etc., have to be met. Um, and the uh, yeah, the, the trade off or, or the co the price we pay for the foiling uh, is what we're trying to minimise here. There seems to be a lot more attention to uh, fairing on the boat. Is that a fair comment? Oh, absolutely. I guess that's probably the, visually the most, uh, the biggest departure. Um, yeah, something. It was clearly something that was always going to be in the program. Um, but the, you know, the important thing for boat one for us at, at the time was to get it on the water and get, and get the uh, sailing time that we needed for the, for the data to, to feed into this one. And the way you've handled the um, main strut under, underneath, that's got it now got a almost an oracle type pot on it. Is that what's happening there? Again, um, I mean the the thing to kind of I guess understand about the the aero fairing thing is it's not about uh, well, not only about uh, drag reduction in, ter in terms of um, aerodynamics. It, the way the the wing uh, and the loading in the wing span wise interacts with the with the cross structure and the and the fairings on it is uh, is a huge performance uh, increase in, in, in the way the boat goes. So um, so yeah the the. Uh, what Oracle have done of, of tying the, the wing closer to the water surface uh, has value um, and, the, and the area to end plate the, the bottom of the wing uh, to make the, the bottom end of the wing more efficient is, uh, is valuable as well. So what happens next from a design and development point of view with this boat? Uh, well certainly the first uh, half dozen days sailing uh, until we you know, really got her up the wind range. Um, there's a huge amount of uh, certain anxiety on board the chase boat, I guess, but uh, a lot of attention to the load data that comes off it and make sure that she's behaving again as we expect. Um, I guess eventually we'll, we'll end up against lining up against Lunarossa again, and uh, that, that's a solid benchmark. And they're, sa they're sailing that boat better and better. Um, and then from there, there's, you know, in terms of the smaller components, boards um, and sailing systems, there, there's, there's still more refinements and more time to build equipment. And so those are the sort of remaining design tasks in front of us. Uh, so really confirming the boat's sort of operating where, where we expect, that the, the loads are in check, and um, you know, focusing on the, the last generation of probably la of uh, race equipment. We've now had a chance to see the other boats out, out a bit more and seen some pictures overnight of Oracle. What, what are you seeing there that you know, maybe the untrained eye doesn't pick up? Um, Oracle looks yeah fairly fairly similar to, to before the crash obviously um, some some changes to uh, forward beam fairing whether that's to do with you know, torsionally stiffen, stiffening the boat uh, they might have moved their rudder bearings slightly um, yeah the, the tramp layouts now a lot more crew friendly on their boat um, but in general I mean, it, you know, it's still the same boat you know. and with Artemis and Oracle we've seen new wing styles come out in the last few weeks. What, what's your read on what's happening there? And uh, Certainly I guess uh, Artemis uh, were probably the outlier uh, with their first wing um, and, and with their second wing have, have certainly taken a step back towards uh, where both Oracle and ourselves are. 
Um, the you know, the Obviously, comments from their camp are very positive about that step, so hopefully that sort of indicates that we were close to the reasonable position in the first place. But um, I think you know, there's going to be a lot we see in the, in the coming months where all the teams start to align themselves a little bit, bit against each other, uh, and that, that's kind of to be expected. Um, and, and that's probably the sort of first steps we're seeing in that process. So, I mean, it's almost a game of steps from now on where... Who, you know, one team comes up to what they think the other one is, and then maybe the other one steps away. Is, is that how you're seeing it? Yeah, I think um, yeah, you're limited in, in terms of you know just the the lead times on on items from here on in. Uh, any any significant piece of structure or uh, or even dagger boards take they take a phenomenally long time to actually design and then build. And so there's there's a limited amount of runway to for, for the convergence to happen. Um, you know, right now with this boat and you know, being relatively similar to our first, um, obviously some a lot of small improvements that we hope add up to um, to, a, to a decent difference. But um, yeah, there's there's we're we're on our path, and I think the the other guys are on theirs, and, and in all likelihood, uh, you know, most people will have the courage of their convictions, and, and we'll get to see that in uh, you know, June, July, August, and, and hopefully for us September. Do you think they've really got time to do much more in terms of development from what we're seeing now and they've really got to get to the stage of focusing on race reliability? Yeah, I mean, the, obviously those guys are still building um, and while you're still building there's always a chance to change things. You know, uh, but I guess a thank you to our builder for uh, being pretty accommodating when we've changed things. But, um, yeah, in terms of uh, our ability to re react when we see... Uh, what other people launch with, um, you know, the, if they're launching in April or, or even May, then uh, that's pretty limited. So for us, the game now is, is really to you know, improve the percentages that we're getting around the track. You know, the, the closer we're sailing this boat to, to its you know, optimum, uh, th those are going to be the areas we make the big gains in from here. When we've talked in the past, the emphasis has been on reliability, but what about redundancy in this boat in terms of being able to have backup systems running and and that sort of thing. Has there been any focus on that? Um, oh, certainly, you know, we, we, we're going into the process of, of, of examining how we handle breakdowns, etc. Um, the weight that the class imposes on you is, is pretty stiff. Um, and so your ability to design a great deal of redundancy in it is pretty limited. Otherwise, you, you, you're essentially having to design out uh, features you'd like. Um, the other thing, yeah, the, the boats are quite so fast. Uh, you know, if if you have to stop to fix something and, and your opposition's doing 30 plus knots, the, the race is over pretty quickly. Um, so the race duration is very short, uh, at 25 minutes to half an hour typically. Um, and so your, your ability to recover from breakdowns is going to be somewhat limited, I think, uh, it would be fair to say. And um, so you know, I think your, your focus therefore has to be more on, on avoiding, uh, avoiding the breakdowns and, and you do that by sort of carefully measuring and, and uh, monitoring the equipment that you do have. Okay, well thank you very much, all the best.